that's awesome. By the way, I love your background with all the books and everything looks great. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks. That's I, I designed that like, uh, and then this painting also I I, I painted as well. Ah, like, that's a, do you do you paint like is that one of the things you do like for yes, like... yes. In, in sometimes uh, when I'm inspired, I do this. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I I do have um, some hobbies that that but but this is another conversation because uh, I was talking to some friends the other day and they were like, oh, but would you make the the hobby that you love uh, like your work? And I do have like a, a fear within me that if I use a hobby that I actually am passionate about and make it work, I would love lost lost interest in that hobby. So I, I don't know how that I'm, you know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that because I, I was always um, a big believer that once you find what you love and then you do that for a living, mm -hmm. you're gonna be successful. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I yeah. I I love the thought of thinking like that. I, I do like to believe that one day I will find something like that and wake up every morning not feeling like I have to work. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the yeah, exactly that's that's the thing. So if you if you feel like you need to go to work then then it's not really a There's passion. something wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well Harris um, I, I would love to start this interview uh, acknowledging the power of of the of social media and networking because if it wasn't because of that I would have probably never met you. Uh, exactly. I, I remember uh, you were on the last session of the Christopher Kelly Leadership Development Program, and yeah. I was in the I was uh, one of the scholars. And I was in that uh, in that room when you presented your work, and I remember thinking to myself, "Oh, we're gonna talk about AI. This is gonna be good." And it yeah. was good. It was really good. I was really excited. I was like, "Oh man, I gotta talk to this guy. I really need to talk to this guy." And, yeah, man, I'm and, excited too. And you know, because of that, and because of uh, social media, networking, and and the people around us. And, and 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 I love that uh, we could actually be here talking, and and I think that's awesome. And we are going to talk about uh, artificial artificial intelligence and AI. Yeah. Uh, but before we get too deep uh, down the rabbit hole, Harris, I would love for you to to tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, who are you? Where you're from? And how do you think this all started for you? Uh, okay. Cool. Cool. With pleasure, man. So. So yeah, I'm, I'm Harris uh, Memich from, from Montenegro. It's a very tiny country in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, not many people heard about it. So, so when I introduce myself, I always say I'm from Europe because then people start asking, so where is Montenegro? Is it like next to Greece? Is it next to... Uh, actually, it sounds sp Spanish. So usually uh -huh. they ask me if it's in Spain, around Spain. But anyway. It's in Balkan. It's like cross next to Croatia and Serbia and Albania and like Greece, that area, Balkan area. And and yeah, and then I, I finished my university there. And after after five years of, of university, then I had a scholarship for Italy for Erasmus. And uh, and then I lived there for two years. So I studied there and I worked as well there. And then after Italy, I came back. I went back to my country and and then I, I, I figured that if architects, if I really want to be a successful architect, I need to have very diverse experience mm -hmm. and experience. I, I don't, I don't mean when I say experience, I don't really mean only working experience, but also cultural experience, like different location and uh, different people, different language. So. When I say culture, that's that's all of those that I just said. So, and then I think culture, like different cultures, are are like the core of the experience. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I think architects need need to like experience different kind of cultures in order to be successful in their projects. What what kind of cultures have you been in, and what have you learned from them? Like uh, I, when I say culture, I, I I mean like the way of living, the way of working. So China is like uh, and now I'm in China, 
and um, and it's something totally different than Europe mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in general than Western culture, culture uh, like cultures in general. Uh, so I, first, like, is the language. Second, food. Third, the speed of life. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and then and then fourth is the size of the cities where you live, like your habitat. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's very like it's interesting because it's kind of ironic. They live in a very big cities, but in those big cities, they live in a very tiny apartments. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, that's that's <laughs> when I say culture. That's that's what I mean. Okay. And which one uh, did you prefer so far? Well, to be honest, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Like, what do I prefer? I prefer where I am, and okay. I am right now here because if I don't like it here, I will just pack and move to another place. Uh, so, so I'm. I'm like that. I don't. I. I don't. I'm not looking. So if I decide to live here in China, then it's already decided in my head. And then I mm -hmm. already adjusted myself and then I already like it there. Because otherwise, if I don't like it, like if I find it something that is something that is not up to my standards, then I would just move to another place. But I already experienced China and then so far I like it. And then like business wise, I like it people wise as well. Culture wise, everything, everything is connected. So I in general, I like it here. I also like Europe. Uh, I never lived in States. Uh, I think that's probably one of my next destinations. Uh, States or like um, Australia, I'm not sure. Uh, but then like moving from there, I think also one of the destinations that I would like to experience life is Africa. Although Ooh, something okay. totally different. Yes, But then, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, like... I'm, I'm just this kind that kind that type of person that I would like to change like and then experience and then see where I fit the best uh, so far I feel very comfortable and I like it here in China and then yeah that's awesome I love that um it's very interesting because AI meaning artificial intelligence it's trendy right now and it's kind of popular right now but You've been working with this for a while. I, I I think that I saw your on your LinkedIn page. Your thesis was about three D printing, right, or something like that. Yes. Yes. So you've been wor you've yeah, been I mean, working with technology a w for a while now. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I came to China is like because uh, Ch Ch Chinese uh, architecture is very advanced in terms of technology. And then, and then, three D printing is very like common here. Uh, that's one of the okay. reasons. I mean, at, at first, one was one of the reasons why I came. Uh, I, I've been, yeah, I, I've been into technology. I'm like this kind of. I like to present myself as like this kind of geeky guy. Uh, <laughs> I was always into this kind of tech and uh, like following uh, what's happening in the world. And because mm -hmm. uh, I like, I like to say that that if we don't follow up with technology, then we are going to be left behind. And I never like to be left behind. Yeah, I guess no yeah. one likes. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I was always into technology and then technology is kind of part of my life right now, like my daily mm -hmm. life. And it's helping me and it's like speeding up the process of work and stuff. It's allowing me to be here, not to be somewhere else or like to travel around, something like that. And how did you when was that key moment that you discovered that you could use that you could successfully use artificial intelligence or ai for your business uh so like in particular ai i figured that like two years ago when i first tried the mid journey i will show later when i share my screen i'll show later my first image of of my first generated yes. image In, in yes, I'm excited about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, but 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 no. But the thing is, like, um, after a while, like I played around like everyone else, and then mm -hmm. I think 99% of the people right now are just playing with it. They are not actually using it, even though some of them they are thinking they're using it, but they're not using it in the right way. So so I figured that after some time, I'm spending so much time, like 
writing prompts, you know, like uh, generating some images that are interesting just to me at this moment. But actually, what's the point of that? Like, I just want to mm -hmm. amuse myself, right? So I, I can amuse myself on YouTube or, or by doing something else. Uh, so yeah, and then I try, and then I started trying to use it like, oh, maybe I can generate um, some 3D rendering or maybe some piece of furniture or something like that. And then, and then that's that's how I figure. Like, in, actually, in the beginning, like after a few weeks of playing around, uh, I figured that this can be used and that this is the future for sure. And um, two years ago, right? So, how how has Mid Journey or ChatGPT or or how has any of this um, AI impacted your business? Can you give me can you give me like an example of of how are you using it to like you know? Sure. So, um, like at the beginning, Mid Journey um, was kind of helping me with the ideas. So mm -hmm. I would put some words, and then it would give me the feedback in the image, and then I would try to reverse, reverse, reverse until I find something that is inspiring to me, and then. And then after a while, like uh, after it it advanced, so then now right now I'm using it like to create like mood boards and some some sort of a concept conceptual renderings for mm -hmm. for projects. So in in that terms, it it helped me. ChatGPT on the other side helped me with like with as you know, like whoever is not native English speaker cannot mm -hmm. really make a text like sound as fluent as someone who is native would do. You yes. So yes. this is where I found, like, even though I read a lot and then I hear, I listen to all podcasts, all movies, I, I always listen and read the subtitles in English, but still I find it difficult when it comes to like writing some, some sort of a professional email or whatever. So this is where I found ChatGPT most useful for this. And then the other thing is I found it useful as well as in generating uh, creativity, like uh, creative ideas, like something that maybe I can implement into the project. For example, uh, if I'm designing a school, mm -hmm. so I would ask ChatGPT, what are the current trends? Even though ChatGPT is not very like I, I think it's 2021. The it's updated like the information, but still can give you some 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 information that if you just type on Google, it will take you forever to find mm -hmm. uh, what you can put into the project. So I would just ask, oh, what are the current trends of uh, putting in like in fun functional wise in um, primary school? And then it will give me some some sort. And then if I don't find it useful, then I would rephrase my question. And then I would. I would try to to see if there is anything that I'm missing out right now. Like as you know, we cannot follow everything up, and then mm -hmm. and then uh, I am that type that type of person that I like to do like competitions, architecture competitions, and then I I don't like saying no to the project. So even mm -hmm. if sometimes I have a client that like is proposing me a, to do some project that I never done in my life, I would never say no. And then this okay. is where I find AI useful, like. It, it can it can give me some ideas that I don't have like I don't have experience so to create my own ideas maybe maybe uh, maybe something like that so instead of instead of searching pictures on Pinterest I would just mm -hmm. put my words into the mid journey and charge GPT and then I would create some of the pictures that I would like to create that's a very interesting way of of designing and and, and making because I talked to a girl a little while ago. She's from here, from Puerto Rico. She she's native Spanish speaking, and she's right now on the USA. And she she has to talk in English. and And the conversation was very interesting because she told me that the ideas that that come from her when she writes in English are different than when she writes in Spanish. So whenever she's thinking about in Spanish some ideas come and when she's thinking in english other ideas come and it's very interesting to to I, I don't know where i'm going with this or what's the conclusion but but it's a very interesting thought that 
language molds your thinking. It's true. It's true. It's true because because we are thinking in our own native language usually. And then when mm -hmm. we switch to some other language, we cannot really we cannot really uh, use all of the words that we know from our native language. So we yes. only use the, the database that we only have in our mind. And then mm -hmm. we play around with that data, database, which is much smaller than our native language. I, yes. I, would, I would put it like that. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because if, if we channel this to ChatGPT and ChatGPT has a lot of knowledge, he plays with the knowledge he has and that's what mm -hmm. he delivers to us. Exactly. So, so the beauty of ChatGPT is because you can talk in your native language, it can give you the feedback in your native language, and then yes. it can transform immediately that feedback in English. Yes. Or yes. in any other language that you want. I mean, I'm just saying English because it's not native language for me and you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that's awesome. And speaking of uh, speaking of architecture a little bit, what what would you define as a successful job in AI regarding architecture? What kind of jobs do you do? using AI? So, so I would say that the conceptual part of the project, I mostly use AI, which means mm -hmm. I, um, so, so let's say, let's say like this, uh, when we go to meet the client and then the client tell us some of the ideas, or maybe he doesn't have any ideas and then he just tell us the RFP, the requirements for the project, mm -hmm. right? So we go back to the studio. It doesn't matter if we work for ourselves or we work some, for someone else. It doesn't matter. It's always, the process is similar, very similar. Uh, and then it also doesn't matter which position you are, because if you are not going to a meeting, somebody else went on a meeting and then come back and then give you the, the feedback from the meeting. Um, so. Then it takes us like one to two weeks or, or three weeks. It depends on the size of the project and the kind of project, right? Uh, but it create it like takes us two to three weeks to create some sort of a concept, like the story, some reference images, layouts, uh, mood boards, and then go to the client. Uh, of course, we need to have different, several, like several different ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And then go to the client, present our ideas, defend our ideas. And then see if they like or not. Okay, let's say that they don't like. Like we didn't get from the first meeting what they wanted, right? So, so this means that we need to go back. Okay, we discuss again on a meeting what do they like, what would they like, what uh, what kind of I don't know what kind of requirements, additional uh, etc. We go back to the studio, right? And and. We need another one to two to three weeks, right? Let's say one to three weeks to create another idea to present again to the, that same client. So let's say that second time when we went on a meeting and present and defend our idea, they're like, right? So it took us, it took us um, like three to six weeks to create the first part of the project, which is only concept part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why it's taking so long? Because we do everything manually. Like we design, we, we design layouts by our hands and for like sketches and then putting it into the CAD, right? And then from CAD, we are taking those layouts and then put, it, put them in 3D software. Then we do materials. Then we do like some sort of model. Then we do rendering after that, right? And then after rendering, we have post-production. We have Photoshop uh, edits and then that's it. And then like we create, we need to create the idea, right? The idea is also again from sketch to some sort of a story and stuff like that, right? For all of this, we need to do it by ourselves, like manual. It's nothing is automatic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with AI, you actually have less steps to create some sort of basic ideas because you can just ask AI or, or like set the command that you would like, and then it can give you a feedback. For example, in my recent projects for shopping mall, I created the whole story for the shopping mall interior, totally on a, uh, using ChatGPT and Midjourney. 
like the whole concept story, the sketches, the, the, the like how to present everything was created by ChatGPT and Mitchell. Uh, because like I just wanted to try to use it in that mm -hmm. way, in that sense, and then it worked. So why why not? And then and then so from the traditional approach to the advanced using AI approach, we we reduced our time from three to six weeks to actually one to two weeks because using AI we can create renderings immediately, we can create um, stories immediately. So it doesn't take us it wouldn't take us uh, one to three weeks, it would take us like one one week at least, like mm -hmm. maximum one week to create several different stories. And then if the client does like, we go back additional one week and then that's it, two weeks done. I mean, if we are not lucky, if we are lucky, we can get it in one week. Um, again, I'm saying it depends on the size of the project because sometimes yes, layouts yes. requires more time. But I'm just like doing this like roughly. Um, by the way, this is this is this is how I use it, and then many people would like on my during my presentations when I when I when I was in back in my country uh, last month, I did several like uh, of this kind of uh, like speak engagements, and mm -hmm. and some of the people uh, at the end I was always uh, give give space for for uh, questions, and then some of the people would argue with me. We lost the essence of the of the like architects and designers, and then my argument for that is that that some projects we cannot we cannot be creative like we cannot we cannot let our creativity lead us because that project requires fast and efficient work. Mm -hmm. And when you need to be fast and efficient, you cannot be creative. I mean, maybe you can in some, sometimes, but not always. And then yeah. AI helps us to be always like in track, you know, like to keep up with the, with the um, uh, others. And that, that's actually one of the things that I wanted to ask you because, uh, different people like different things and maybe i'm the kind of person that likes construction documents or maybe i'm the kind of person that likes uh analyzing and or maybe or maybe designing but to the mass major majority of architects i can argue that what we like the most is designing and using these kind of technologies i can argue that that's like the fun part. Is isn't that like the fun part? Actually, designing. Okay, I would say that. I would say that me, I'm the same. So, I also love creative work. I love that first part of the project. I love. Mm -hmm. I enjoy doing this. I I'm. I don't know. I, I just I'm just in love with architecture. But I think AI won't distinguish architects as someone who will use AI and someone who will not use AI. No, I think that AI will, will separate clients because even now we have clients that they, they want shit done immediately. <laughs> but I think, I mean, all clients want shit done immediately, right? <laughs> okay. But, okay. But some, some, some clients, they will say, okay, let, let, let your creativity come to mm -hmm. service. Like, yeah. give me your best, you know? But so, some of them, they just want something done immediately and yeah. then that's it. They don't care about, they don't care about the price. They don't care about, they only want to save money and like, er, like every, money is everything for them. And yeah. those, those kind of clients, we will be forced in the near future, we will be forced to use technology to help us satisfy those clients. And then on the other side, we will have clients who will pay more, maybe more money, but those clients will be the clients who would like, who would let us do our creative work. Yes. And I, I mean, I think we're on the same page because if we look at this business wise, it makes sense. If artificial intelligence saves us time and is more efficient and is quicker and sometimes even better than 
what separates you from the other guy that's going to use it it's the technology so if you, if you don't use exactly. it that that other, that that other guy will and, exactly. and business what it makes sense uh, less time more money more competence you know it it makes sense but it, exactly. it always comes it, it it always comes the argue of the tra traditional architect you, you know for example uh there's a I remember when I was in school, there was the argument that, oh, if you don't draw by hand, that, that that's the real essence. You cannot draw in your computer or you cannot draw in your tablet. That's not the real essence. And architects that sketch are better thinkers than architects that do their job on the computer. You know, technology has always been that, um, how can I say this? Technology has been always, you know, like, like I don't have the word here, but it, it's never been easy for technology to come in when it comes to a creative work. There's always purists and people that, you know, maybe it's because of fear, maybe it's because of they don't know how to use it, but there's always been like this kind of, you know. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't agree with you that it wasn't easy for technology to be implemented. No, I think it wasn't easy for people to implement technology because technology was already there. Yes. Because in general, technology doesn't give a shit about yes. what me and you think. True. Technology is advancing every day, every minute, every hour. If we don't follow up and then if we don't want to implement it now, we are going to be forced to implement it sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I would rather and, much take the the soon wave and implement it early than be those at the last, you know, trying to to. You know how they say: the sooner you you get something, the more chances you have with that something. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How? Uh, what kind of difference has has this kind of technology? Uh, help you with like what kind of clients are you able to acquire now using AI that you couldn't before or how the how does this technology has helped you maybe uh, with the studio maybe you don't need a bigger studio maybe you can work with a smaller studio how, how have you worked with this uh, well it definitely helped um, like in terms of people who I need to hire to finish some some part of the project uh, but again, I was encouraging everyone who is working with me to use AI because if they don't use it, then, then they are slow. Mm -hmm. And when I say slow, I don't, I don't mean to be harsh to them, but it's just a reality because if you, if you don't know how to use AI, then you need to spend two days to make me one good rendering, right? And today with AI, with yeah, ex or some, some, yeah, ex exactly, or more. I mean, but roughly it's two days. Like anything above two days, it's unacceptable, at least for me. <laughs> uh, but I mean, in general, uh, right now we are in a stage where we can, we at least for the concept part of the project, we can uh, manipulate AI to give us some sort of a rendering and ideas that are acceptable for for clients. And that is the most important thing. And those acceptable renderings are taking like 99% less time than regular renderings. And then the effect is similar. So, yeah. But and in terms of selecting clients, like, to be honest, like my, my, my work and my studio in China is small, relatively small, uh, depends on a project because I, I have some, some, uh, like employees based on a project base, like per project basis. So if the project is big, like big scale, then hire more people. But if the, I, if I don't have a project at some point, uh, then I don't have any people. And then this is how I also agree with them. And then this is what they prefer as well, because they can work like for two, three months, four months, and then they can earn enough money to like not work for next few months or something like that. Uh, so, so far, so far it's like this, in terms of selecting clients, it's like, it didn't help much. 
in terms of like what kind of projects I can do, but it helped in a way that I started I started posting um, like about AI and then how to how to use AI in our daily work. And then, as you know, like I wrote a book which I will share later. Uh, but uh, and then in in that way it helped because I start getting uh, attraction on so on LinkedIn. And then, as you know, like LinkedIn is very like professional and like business kind of social network. Mm -hmm. So I gained some clients there, totally by accident, just by posting about AI, and then and then they were interacting with me, uh, sending me messages, and then I replied because I reply on every message and every every comment. I'm not sure if you, if you notice, but every comment and every message I reply, or at least I like if there's nothing to reply. Uh, so, so yeah, in, in that terms, it was, it was helpful. And then, uh, I gained, I gained like good base of clients just through LinkedIn. And are clients usually okay with, with you using AI? Uh, how, how of has course. it been? Yes. Of course. I mean, they don't care. They don't care what tools you use. Have, 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 has it ever happened to you that client asks, oh, please use 3ds Max. Otherwise I don't want to <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, they just they just want the <laughs> final result, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What's the what's the most common misconception uh, that you've seen around the internet about maybe Midjourney or ChatGPT or this kind of technologies? I I think the biggest one is uh, um, is lack of creativity, and and um, how to say that word Play, plagiarism. Uh, plagiarism, you, yeah, yeah. When you when you try to to mimic something, uh, which I totally disagree, because my my philosophy is totally different, and uh, I haven't like I don't like to argue with people, but I just gave them my opinion, and then they can do with that opinion whatever they want. Mm -hmm. uh, so my opinion is this: uh, How do we traditionally start with a project? Okay, can you tell me? How do you start with the project? Like in in the concept uh, concept phase. In, in any in any phase, like you need to start with the project. How do you start? Well, you probably looking for inspiration images and okay. things that you wanna. Okay. Right? <laughs> great, great, great. That's it. That's it. Inspiration images where on Pinterest, right? Okay. <laughs> probably, yeah. That that's great. That's great. That's great. That's my point exactly. So my point is. If we are looking for the inspiration to show to our client, uh, potential client, uh, on Pinterest, and then we are gathering those images, or we like this style, we like this color, we like this shape, right? And then we gather all of those images, and then we show to the client, right? And then the client say, oh, I want this. And then we are trying to, to create something that is similar to what the client just said, mm -hmm. something that we gather from Pinterest, right? And then that's it. That's, that's, that's how you got your idea. It's not out of the blue. Like our experience is based on, on, on the, on the how to say. It. So our experience is actually based on the projects that we've seen, like the pictures that we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, as I said before, like culture and everything, but especially like the pictures and then the, 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 the things from the books and like from the magazines and from the, from yeah. the social media. This is this is how we gain experience. Also with working as well. Like I'm just saying, part of the part of the experience is gaining like gain like that. So, so my point is uh, that uh, like using AI is just create uh, making these steps of finding something that you want and style that you want much more uh, quicker. Uh, in a way that okay, let's say that. Let's say that you are a freshman. You have no clue about uh, history of architecture, so you can go to church and then and then you know that your client maybe likes something historic, and then you know what's okay. Let's say baroque. You never heard of baroque. Like, I mean, you, we if you if you are uh, at least educated, like like general education uh, from the high school, you heard about baroque. But I know from the fact that. 70% doesn't, 70% of the people doesn't know, doesn't have a clue what's Baroque. And mm -hmm. Baroque, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, but you can go, you can go to the ChatGPT, right? And then ask what are the styles from the, 
from the from history of architecture and then it can give you a list and then you can go on mid journey or on google whatever you want and then you can search all each of these styles and then you can actually have a quicker understanding of those styles than in traditional way where you need to like google it then you need to like make some notes and then mm -hmm. you know like understand it better and stuff, stuff like that so so all i'm saying is ai is a database that is trained on so many pictures so many so many pictures from the pinterest yes that <laughs> that whatever we type in it will combine those pictures from the words that we put and then it will give us the out, out feedback it's the same totally the same as what kind of feedback we are creating by searching the images on pinterest putting in putting them together and then showing to the client it's mm -hmm. the same as we just type what we want what kind of what kind of style let's say baroque and whatever and then what kind of like uh, space what kind of like anything you, you, you can describe whatever you want give, give you the feedback and then you show to the client totally the same process mm -hmm. so so all i'm saying is and then and then you need to be open to say to the client that oh this is created by ai and then this is not what you are actually gonna get but something similar we are gonna create for you and then the client will say okay that's cool i like that mm -hmm. and then at least you have a base same. So, I, I guess the logic is the same. So, uh, a little while ago, you said that everyone is in the face of playing with AI, playing with Mid Journey, playing with ChatGPT. How much time did it usually take someone you think to pass from playing with with that tool or technology to actually have the knowledge to use it properly? Uh, that's really, I mean, I cannot give you an answer for that because some people died playing games. I mean, died, when I say died, I mean, um, they spend their life playing games, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. spending time playing games. And besides amusement, it's totally useless activity. Like, I mean, unless you are a professional game player, which is, 0.01% of all game players in the world. Yeah. Um, so, so it's the same with the AI. You can, you can play with it forever. Like you can always go on a journey. You can create you some, any kind of, any kind of stuff that you are amused with. And, and some people g got away with it. Like they, they post it on social media and then they got some, some sort of, uh, uh, like attraction and then popularity. But in general, what I think the, the, the point of those, those AI uh, platforms are, is that we, we need to learn and then we need to understand how to use them in our daily life to get, mm -hmm. to make our daily life easier. And like also work as well, like work is part of daily life, right? We're we're living in a very fast paced world where, where technology is moving really fast every day. What kind of ad applicable advice can you give to young designers or young architects that are actually on, on, on school, you know, they're not graduate yet, uh, for them to prepare them for the future? Um, well, recently I've been to, I've been invited to, to speak, uh, about technologies, uh, new digital technologies, uh, in architecture in university in Montenegro. And, uh, my advice to young people is like, I have several advices. One is dream, but also like persuade your dream. That's the first thing because architects without dream are just draftsmen. Draftmen, draftmen, draftmen. Uh, you know what are what are draftmen? Those are people who just do layout yes, based yes. on their sketch and like do some some sort of a like detail that I already made up. So not very creative work. Uh, but the thing is, when you dream about something, you really need to work on the on on like following those dreams. Otherwise, it's just a dream, and then mm -hmm. it's nothing. So that's the first thing. Second thing is really 
you need to follow with the with the current trends uh, in terms of technology, in terms of the the industry in general, uh, because if you are not following the current trends, you cannot really respond to the to the client's question once you got to face the client. Uh, and then the the third one is when you study something, don't study for the grade for the mark study to understand that thing because everything that we study during our university during our school in general uh it's very important for us so how many times happened to me that i hear those kids saying oh uh, this is biology I'm, I'm gonna be a lawyer why do i need biology because understanding the basic of biology makes you uh makes you someone who is who is clever who is smart enough to be talked to mm -hmm. and then this i i mean in general so when you talk to someone and then someone knows and something only a, like let's say that you talk about uh, to lawyer and then they only know stuff about law At some point, you're going to be very bored because you are not into law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so in general, if uh, knowledge like what we get into school, it's not only something that we will never use in our life, but it's something that we there will be a chance to talk about. And then if you don't know anything about it, you'll be left behind. Like nobody. Nobody would like to talk to you about stuff that you don't know what to say about. Mm -hmm. And then this, and I, I really mean, because in architecture school, we have so many subjects that we think are not important at the moment, but in the long run, they are very important. I would say like that. So yeah, that's my third advice. Learn something in for the case, for the sake of learning, not for the sake of passing that exam. Awesome. I have a list of most common fears when it comes to AI. And I just would love to know uh, what are your thoughts on some of them? And I think the, the, the first one and the most, probably the most I've heard is uh, that AI is gonna eliminate jobs and create unemployment. What do you think about that? Definite, definitely not agree. Actually, I believe that it will uh, create new jobs. And and maybe it will um, it will like change the way we work and then we approach the work. So I have a feeling we will have in general more time to do creative work than than do some boring work like draftman, for example. Drafting in I never like that that part of my of my job, even though it's necessity. Yeah. To, to to go through it. But uh, that's the most boring part for me. And yeah. So I think that, that, that those kind of stuff, like boring stuff, is going to be like uh, interchange with AI. Okay. AI will, AI will create a digital divide and increase inequality. Digital divide? Yes. I think it means like if it's if it becomes a paying service though those with capital or with money will have access to this technology and those who don't have money will not so it will divide it will increase the divide between those who can and those who probably won't but i mean everything in this world is is uh, divided by by like in, we, we live in a capitalistic capital capitalistic world world right capitalist world yeah. uh, so so in terms of 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 that i mean we already live in that kind of world and people with 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 means they are able to to use like because you know ai is uh, it looks very simple and then it looks mm -hmm. like just a software but actually it's not just a software you know ai the 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 work behind ai and then the hardware behind ai it's so much power it's so powerful and then it requires so much money to to work with so 
people, if if like oh, let's say the open AI from from San Francisco, they, they created ChatGPT, right, and Dali. Uh, if they didn't have if they didn't have uh, investors investment, like they would never be able to create ChatGPT and open AI. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry, Dali. Uh, so in that in that in that for that thing, I I mean, I think we already live in that kind of world. And if you don't, if you are not able to find a way to to find capital, then because you know capital is is everywhere. Mm-hmm. You just need to be creative enough and then smart enough and then resourceful enough to to find it and then to take it and then to use it. Because everybody likes to man- make money. So if you are yeah. able to make money for someone else, if you if you okay, listen, I, I'll be the first one to invest in you. Just give me some ideas and I'll I'll be the first one to throw money at your face. You know? <laughs> okay. Everybody's like that. So money is yeah. money is money is easy as long as we are ready to and then not ready, but if we are able to make money. Awesome. The next one. AI will lead to a loss of control over decision making processes. Already, already led to it. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, from my experience, the way I see that is uh, sometimes ChatGPT gave me better answers than I came up with. So I just took those answers. <laughs> 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 so in, in, in that way, I agree to, the, to what you just said. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. This is a good one. Uh, we will have no idea why AI does what it does. And this obviously means the black, spo- black box. I think it, it's what it means. Well, we are right now in a, in a stage where, I mean, I like to call this stage dumb AI. So it's not smart enough to create their own their own stuff, its own stuff. We they need the they need the starting point and the ending point. So starting point is us uh, saying what they need to produce. Like they, when I say they, I mean the AI, like in general, the that the kind of code. And then once it's produced, again we they need us to say, oh, this is good or this is bad. So yes or no. So we are still in this stage, but I think soon, five years. I think <laughs> uh, we are going to be in a stage where we are going to have that super advanced AI, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be able to decide if it's right or wrong, what they just produced. But I do believe that people will still be the one controlling it. Speaking of super AI, and I want to maybe have a parenthesis here because this is something that I heard the other day that I thought it was really interesting. I'm going to try to put it in words. And they were making the comparison that when Albert Einstein um, spoke about his work back in his time, no one understood what he was talking about. His IQ was so much higher than everyone else's. And if we use that as a basis to where we are right now, in a couple of years, like you say, AI will be so much more intelligent than us. Do you believe that they will give us answers that we wouldn't comprehend because we're not that smart yet? I mean, yeah, I believe so. I mean, what what will happen in five years is really it's science fiction for for now. Like, yes. we cannot even imagine what, what's going to happen. But... I, I mean, in general, I I believe that AI will make our lives easier. This is what I believe. I mean, this is what I'm because as I as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm always optimistic. Like I always I always think positively about stuff, and so far I've never been wrong, at least for my <laughs> life. So, at least for my life. That's a good, so I that's a good way of seeing things. <laughs> So I do believe that we are going to have very easy life soon. That's awesome. Okay. Next fear. Uh, AI will develop on its own without human knowledge. Super AI. That's it. <laughs> uh, okay. For, for, 
I, I'm really AI dumb. For those of us who don't know what super AI is, can you maybe uh, tell us a little bit about it? So th that's what I just said. So that's that's the thing. Uh, AI, super AI is is AI able to AI is able to make their own decisions and then make their own um, answers based on what they produced. So they let's say that they need to produce a black chair. It will produce a chair that is black color, and then it will have those two. I mean, this is just a very simple. <laughs> Very simple for, <laughs> for, for baby brain uh, explanation, but the AI will understand, oh, this is a black chair. This is color black, and this is the shape of the chair. Those are the dots for the where the chair should be. And then, okay, that's the chair, bam, chair goes to be produced, something like that. So mm -hmm. I do believe that we are going to be there soon, like in five, to, I think 10 years is too long from now, but I, I have a feeling five years, uh, we are going to have AI that is going to be able to learn by itself. And do you think, and maybe this is one of the, I don't think it's one of the most popular fears, but it's definitely one, one of the things that I've heard. Do you think that AI will become so intelligent in the near future that accidentally we will give them a prompt about doing something more uh, efficiently and they with with the black box thing they decide that i don't know oxygen is not uh necessary for making this kind of thing and it will start to make decisions to don't have oxygens and because of that decision well we need oxygen you know like and and we die so that, that's what i said i i i'm always optimistic i i have <laughs> a feeling that ai will always work to make us uh, better and like to make our lives easier and then better and in terms of quality and stuff like that. So, so I, I think, and then I also do believe that AI is uh, like any other machine. It's like we, we are engineering it. And then mm -hmm even once it steps out from our zone of engineering. So when it starts to engineer by itself, I have a feeling it will engineer for our uh, benefits. Best interest, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Harris, I'm really excited about this part. I'm really excited about uh, your process and how you go from, from sketch to render. Uh, it's one of the things that I saw in the in the presentation that I really really like. Uh, it's one of the things that I think that we designer need to be doing to not fall behind. And I, I would love to for you to to show us. Um, I think you can share screen and sure. I will I will share screen of my book and then I will go through some some of the pages. Awesome. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. I awesome. See, I see it now. Perfect. So, okay, so can, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to show us right now? Is it your process or? Sure. So I'm going to show you some of the pages from the book, like a little mm -hmm. teaser. Awesome. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to show you a few scenarios, like how do I approach sketch to rendering uh, with me journey? Uh, I'm, I must say that um, right now, like uh, we are at the stage where me journey is not that specific and cannot give you the accurate dimension all of the time. Uh, besides mid journey, there is a stable diffusion, which is like, according to the sketch that you provide, it's more accurate. And then, and then there is another uh, platform that is also interesting for us architects is Vera. Vera is a platform that is like a plugin for Revit. And according to the model that you develop in Revit, you, it can give you some sort of uh, AI rendering. So, okay. but like along the way, it will uh, advance more and more. So I'm sure like mid journey uh, version six, because now we are at 5.1 uh, version six will, uh, will uh, be a uh, much more like uh, advanced and then it will have some features to, to change stuff. Um, okay. First, I want to show you something that is very interesting, which is my first sketch. Uh, my first, okay. uh, my first um, uh, prompt that I created uh, 2022 
and um, actually, so so what I was I was watching um, uh, some TV show uh, at the time about dragons, and uh, and yeah, and then I so I first prompted this photo of the dragon in the house on the tree, mm-hmm. and. Uh, this is what it gave me. So you, you can see that clearly it doesn't really show anything specifically. You, we can see some sort of a house here and then some some dragon here. But what I realized that I, I realized at the moment that, oh my God, this is something that is going to be advanced so quick if it's now able to do this kind of, this sort of thing. Can you, can you imagine what, what's going to be able to do in one year? And then, year or like two years later, uh, we are at the at the like something that is totally crazy. I mean, Mid Journey now is literally changing the the all design industries. Okay, so uh, what I would like to to start with is scenario one. So scenario one is a little bit uh, how to say like loose scenario. It doesn't require uh, very precise details so steps required to to do from this sketch to the rendering are less than if it's a more uh, like more ad- advanced more complicated scene so this one is like uh, this 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 kind of sketch i made in um, adobe illustrator so it's kind of uh, vectorized mm-hmm. and um and then, yeah, I mean, I just uploaded this sketch to to Discord, to Mid Journey. And then, uh, so you see the link of this link. This link is actually the sketch, the previous sketch. And in the prompt, besides the link from the previous sketch, I added like conceptual rendering sketch of wall art and plants, watercolor style. So my philosophy and my logic is that from the sketch, you need to go step by step towards the rendering. So first thing is like from sketch to a little bit more accurate sketch and then more uh, more color sketch. And then from that color sketch, we go to the another step, which is like more rough rendering or like a very low poly rendering, something like that. So as you okay. can see, like here from step two to step three. Uh, so once it gave me like like several examples of uh, of my prompt, then I chose. Oh, okay, I like this one because it's like similar to what I what I created at the beginning, and then mm-hmm. and then I put this image to another prompt. So you see, this link here is actually a link from mm-hmm. this image, not okay. from the previous one, because now we are at step three. So we are putting the link from the step two image, and then. You can see that what I put here, interior rendering of wall art, like V-Ray and rendering engine. So I added more detailed and specific stuff that I wanted to be uh, shown. Okay. But and what, 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt you. What does the S1000 and the R, AR2 uh, and sure. 3 mean? Sure, sure, sure. I, I'll explain. So, okay. uh, slash, um, so uh, S1000 is, S, S is for stylized. And this number goes from 250 to 1,000. 250, okay. I mean, uh, the, the higher the number, the less creativity you give to the AI. So AI will give you more creative work and then like according to that number. So if, he, if you just leave it to S250, then it will just follow your own words. But to S1,000, it combines your words with creativity from on its own uh, okay. and then AR e, uh, is standing for uh, the uh, aspect ratio which means like the ratio of the of the of the picture so you see okay. that here is two two uh, two three which means this is two and then this is three so horizontal is two vertical is three perfect yeah Okay, so you can see that in this prompt, I added more accurate, like more detailed um, information for for what mm-hmm. I want from this from this image towards this image, and then once I chose this one, we are to step four, where again I added a link from the previous image. So from this image, I added link to 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 the prompt, and then here I added more specific words like editorial style rendering. 
uh, and then I added e also the what kind of what type of camera, and then what kind of lightning. Um, so everything that is like uh, that is included in one rendering. So you need to be more specific in order to have more specific um, output. Mm -hmm. And then this is in the end what I was satisfied with. So I mean, you see the difference is quite big from this one to this one. But mm -hmm. you know, like along the way, you change your mind, you want to add some some stuff. So this is this is what I what I came up with at the end. Um, Looks awesome. Yeah. And then, like this, is something that doesn't, as I said at the beginning, doesn't require too much of a, of a details. Um, mm -hmm. Next scenario is like again similar. So I, I tried like um, a chair. Uh, also, also um, like from from this one, I I went to this one. Like I added some colors to the sketch that I uh, firstly provided, and then uh, once you once you put colors on the on the sketch, then the AI, it's also easier for them to recognize, oh, where is what, or which color represents what. So when I put brown leather, wherever was brown color, it will put brown leather or uh, green mm -hmm. color, green leather. Uh, but you see uh, along the way, like from step three to step four, I uh, actually a little bit changed my idea. Like I wanted this to be more roundy and then more, um, more like um, a thin, right, thinner. So, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and you can see like dark, thin iron. So I, I, I changed the specific thing the, in, the, in the prompt. And then it created from here, from this image to this uh, two image. And then, um, so at, my, at the beginning when I, where I put this, I wanted to, this to be like a brown leather or green mm -hmm. leather. So I was not sure. And then in the end I, I chose, okay, I'll, one, I'll go with one green and then one green and brown. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see here is brown and then and then here we have also brown top but green sides and then and then later on like from uh, from step four to step five so uh step steps are again same i don't i don't want to go through the through the what i literally put because people can see this on the on the screen but like you can mm -hmm. see that all of those uh, links are actually links from the previous steps like same as the, mm -hmm. as what i just uh, Explain, and then you, uh, you can see here that th these are just again renderings. So, and then these are conceptual product renderings because why conceptual? Because there is nothing real behind or in the image. Uh, and then you can mm -hmm. see the you can still see the some some of the lines uh, also here. Um, anyway, after after this step, uh, once I picked the one that I like, I went to another step where I put uh, I want. Uh, uh, again, rendering conceptual rendering uh, of a chair, but with more uh, accurate and more real life things. And then you can see here that we can see the lamp. We can see that it's a, it's a wall. And then this one is again more accurate. And then, like once I was satisfied with this one, uh, that's it. I finalized my my renderings. So okay. I, I I mean um, the the thing is, so I started with this kind of sketch, but I ended up with something that is more likely to be what I wanted at the beginning. It's just, I was sketching so fast. So I, I mean, I just did something um, from the top of my mind, but uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's the beauty of AI because it will give you some of the ideas and then you can change the, the, the like your own design. I mean, improve, not change, improve. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then we are coming to the, to the scenario three where it's a little bit more uh, specific and then more accurate design. So you need you, there are much more details. And then, as I mentioned before, the more details, the more steps you need. So okay, again from the step one, this is as you can see very simple sketch, not even like very accurate. Uh, I did this I think when I was like in my university, so it was a very old one. So what mm -hmm. I did, I scanned my I scanned my picture. Uh, I uploaded uploaded to Mid Journey, and then in step two I added some colors. So you need to put link, and then what you want to be on the on the on the uh, image, like you see that from here we went to here. Uh, so I wanted blue curtains, like a wooden wooden bed, and then from from here once AI has enough information on the image, it can go. Uh, you can go to the next step. the The next step was to add more more details, like. Uh, like maybe different kind of uh, textures and different kind of uh, uh, colors used in the in the image, 
and then uh, mm -hmm. you can see here what I what I did like I put some yellow thing uh, I can still blue curtain uh, and then from step three once it has the, enough information you can go to step four which which can give you like a rough rendering again when I say rough rendering those are the very like what we what we as architects used to uh, pro produce is those fast renderings that just go quickly as quickly as possible just to see the the combination of colors and stuff uh, in the real like uh, in the real uh, world and um, so yeah after rough rendering once you choose the one that you like uh, it may happen that like from step three you need to uh, create more like more images because every outcome every uh, prompt that you put uh, the outcome is for image right but it may happen mm -hmm. that those four images is not something that you are looking for or they are a little bit different than what you are looking for so uh, you need to like uh, click a uh, few times to to create uh like few more uh images right and mm -hmm. then once you chose the one then then you go to the step five where you are going to put like a fine-tuned rendering you can see here mm -hmm. uh so and then you, you here you can add more more detail like a description of the what kind of uh picture what kind of camera what kind of lens what kind of lightning and stuff um and then after that one, like from step five to step six, uh, once you Whoa. once you create something like that you like, you can go from rendering to photo, and then from mm -hmm. from rendering to photo, like it's even more accurate. And then uh, from this one, uh, so on the way to create this one, uh, Mid Journey gave me a few of the different uh, iterations that I liked. So th th mm -hmm. these are actually the one that I chose in the end. Uh, as you can see, like the, the the shape, the color of the curtain is different, but that's just because I felt like, oh, this is more natural. And then this is more uh, like a rendering rendering style. And then this is more like a natural photos, photographic style. Uh, they yeah, look can, amazing. Yeah. And then you can see here what I was. I, so, so from like, you can see that my sketch was this, and then we ended up like this so same corner mm -hmm. same angle uh this is i mean this is what i was aiming for and uh, like it for for this for this uh it took me literally from the like after i drew the sketch very very rough sketch uh it took me like i don't know 10 minutes to produce those two images and Whoa. then and, and then this is enough for the client to show oh what, what do you think about this? And then clients say, oh, I like this one, or I don't like this one. Mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. yes, you understand? And is it is it 10 minutes because you're, you're already used to using the prompts and and mid-journey? Or do you think that uh, how steep is the learning curve is my, my question? I, I would say that, yeah, I mean, since I have a little bit more experience, what kind of you, words to use and what kind of, uh, like settings to to put into the prompt, so it's it's a bit mm -hmm. easier. But all of this I actually uh, explained in my book. That that I mean that's why I wrote okay. the book because I, I mm -hmm. want to share mm -hmm. the experience, uh, my experience with other people, uh, and then like a lot of people who actually took the book, uh, they gave me their response that it's very good. It helped them a lot. They it saved a lot of time and the energy, like trying out different kind of stuff. And then mm -hmm. as well, uh, you can see that I also hear, so prompt creation, it's another, uh, another chapter in the book. And then where I actually mm -hmm. put how to do, uh, how to do the, the stuff. Uh, and, th and that's exactly what I'm, what I'm looking at that the prompt it's like, it's the magic. It's where it, it it's where it all happens. Yeah. And, and, and it's unbelievable because the thing is the, the better or more detail you you put on the prompt the better the outcome exactly. and 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 one of the things that i saw on on the last one that i that i thought that was genius that i wouldn't i wouldn't thought of is that it says canon eos archery with 16 millimeter lens like you even yeah. specified the kind of camera and the kind of angle that yes. that is going to take and, and that's awesome that's that's amazing so uh, that's why I said, uh, I always mention this, that universities are never going to die because universities are not only giving you some, like universities are giving you basic knowledge. Plus 
they are uh, they are making you more socialized so you you spread your network you are starting from university like from school and then you are spreading mm-hmm. your network like from school towards the work and then from work towards the clients stuff like that so university is not just a knowledge i mean it's a basic knowledge but also socializing and then this is where i found your university uh, useful because we actually learn about what kind of camera and what kind of angles to to use in our in our renderings um so but but i mean besides that i i assume that not many people know about this kind of stuff so all of this i actually uh, i actually uh, included in my in my book and then i can show you here uh okay so here i for, i put all of the architects that you can use mm-hmm. and then all of the designers and artists depends of what kind of rendering you want and then mm-hmm. also periods and styles the the thing that i mentioned to you uh, uh like so, somebody doesn't know about baroque but here i put baroque and then what what kind of like specification it is mm-hmm. uh, and then also i added like photographers and styles like what kind of so uh, different kind of photographers have different kind of styles right so in order yeah. for you to experiment with the image that you like uh, i think it would be very good for you to experiment with, with the photographers as well because this is how the mm-hmm. ai is uh, learned on and then as well i also uh, added like camera and lenses and then what kind of camera is used for what kind of um, uh, thing and then uh, also here like what what kind of lenses are uh, used and then what kind of um, uh, features of the lens uh, and then I also explained like what is used for what and then uh, as well like for landscapes I also described what kind of landscapes because um, we are architects we don't do only interior design so uh, landscape description is very mm-hmm. important for us um, oh yeah and and uh, also what I did here is I actually gave examples so example of the simple prompts example of the more detailed mm-hmm. prompts uh like the difference between simple and detailed the d- different difference of the outcomes so i mm-hmm. i literally gave a lot of uh information on in order to save you time so how to mm-hmm. how to how to do something in order to get something uh like in this kind of quality i mean if this is enough for for uh for you um oh yeah this, and this is this is amazing here is this this yeah. looks really good. Like, I'm 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 going this... through the through the book, so some people will actually be sneaky, and then they will stop, and then uh, <laughs> and then uh, read the book. But I don't mind because even I mean I didn't make books, so in order to make money, I made book in order to help people because mm-hmm. all of those informations I'm actually putting on on LinkedIn, and then uh, and then I don't mind like sharing uh, sharing the knowledge. Uh, it it's awesome. I I, I, I want, love I it. To... I yeah. I just want to actually find some. Oh yeah. I want to uh, show you one more thing. Um, so yeah. what I did is like uh, I also created a, a a prompt for ChatGPT in order to give you um, immediately prompt. So what you need to do is like uh, copy this stuff and then put it mm-hmm. in ChatGPT, uh, change some of the words, and then it will give you. So these are the pictures actually created by ChatGPT. Uh, this one here, awesome. and then this one here. Yeah. Um, OK, I want to I wanna show you another feature with uh, with Midjourney, which is actually feature Describe. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. sure many people like already heard about this, but I just want to want to go through it because I think it's very important for us. Uh, mm-hmm. So we, once we upload some kind of a picture, this is picture from internet, and then uh, you you upload the, that picture, and then you put describe, and then it it can give you the description of the picture that you gave to to Mid Journey. So why why is this important? It's because it's important for you to understand uh, what you need to add to the prompt in order to get some some sort of a similar thing. So you can see here that it's like modern villa that sits on the side of the mountain. But OK, sometimes it's not right because it's in the style of Anto- Antoni Gaudi, which is not right because Antoni Gaudi is much more uh, organic comparing mm-hmm. to this one. Uh, but uh, I guess because of the stones and stuff, it's recognized like an Antoni Gaudi. But you can see like you can choose the one that you, you think is um, is good and then you can you can check it out. And then what I did is like you can just 
copy this and then put it in mid journey and see what kind of style give you give you back. Uh, I think this is important for us to understand how the prompt works. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I agree. Oh uh, yeah, and I mean, though, besides product rend- like besides renderings, like I also tried some product renderings because I had a client from LinkedIn that they wanted me to do a product rendering for their website, uh, their furniture, their furniture company, and uh, from Australia. And then I did, uh, and then they were amazed with the job, uh, all but done by AI, like literally in three days. Um, okay. I also want to go through DAL E. Uh, DAL E is from mm-hmm. another another platform. It's from from OpenAI, <coughs> and. Uh, what I want, why I want to mention Dali is because uh, you remember this picture. Uh, I can show you actually. I can show you. Okay, this picture here. Uh, mm-hmm. The the client didn't like this table, uh, so. Okay. okay. So initially, in front of the client, they said that they would like a table with uh, with red, red acrylic glass, and then uh, in Dali you can actually select that table. Uh, Put the prompt that you want, red acrylic glass, like as you can see here, and then it can give you immediately four different uh, options. And then, mm-hmm. based on those options, you can like, uh, cho- uh, I mean, show to the client and see if they like. And then another thing that I like about Dali is like um, adding pixels to, I mean, adding a space to your uh, rendering. So, for example, you mm-hmm. said you can see this picture is very cropped here. So, what I want is I want to see the the garden and then the pool and then i just selected that frame add the description what i wanted to see and then it literally gave me four options which i selected this one uh, which i think is an is amazing feature of uh, it's of amazing yeah yeah it really is yeah i mean this journey is going mid journey is going towards this direction it's just they are not there yet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um okay gigapixel is another another thing which i use a lot of the time uh, most of the time this is actually uh, ai uh, resizer so it can resize your image uh, by six times i think it, and it looks very 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 good you can see here how the the, the, the picture is blurred and then one it's resized uh, mm-hmm. by it's only by four times and then i chose the style lines uh, you can see here that the picture is much more clear uh, also amazing amazing tool for us that's awesome especially for blurry images right exactly i mean not only for blurry images but you know like when you are presenting something to the client you need to make sure that your presentation is consistent with the quality so you cannot Mm -hmm. show some pictures that is uh, very good quality and then some picture is not very good quality because it it doesn't make sense uh and then client is also confused um i want to show you one more thing but oh yeah google pixel google pixel i'm not sure if i put it here uh, and anyway, Google Pixel is the AI uh, from Google that can recognize things um, on your picture, and it literally mm-hmm. can recognize can recognize like if you put if you put uh, let's say that you, let's say that you put this uh, this kind of picture on the Google Lens, uh, it can literally find you a lamp in your in your area where you can buy this lamp and how much does it cost, and then it can give you a variation mm-hmm. of this uh, lamp. Same works for anything like materials, uh, uh, bed, anything like literally anything. So I, I also That's use amazing. that. Yeah, I also use that uh, as well so many times because again replaced replaced. I before we had the we had the guy who is in charge for doing FFNE, which means like mm-hmm. furniture and materials um, examples, right? And then provide these uh, as part of the PowerPoint presentation that we are showing to the client. And then he would o- always take like two to three days in order to combine all of the furniture, materials, um, elements from the design uh, and put it in PPT. But right now with uh, Google Lens, you can do this in like literally one hour, the whole mm-hmm. project. That, that, that thing I found very useful. Uh, That's I mean, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I would say, I want to say that this book is, um, oh, Everything that I, so all of the images in the book are actually created mm-hmm. by AI. So even my, awesome. even the, even the cover, uh, because you see each chapter has a different kind of cover, uh, which mm-hmm. again makes sense with the, with the, with the, 
name of the chapter, right? So everything is created. And then even my picture here is also created by AI, mm -hmm. um, the, the book cover also. Uh, I want to say that, yeah, the book is still uh, available. Uh, whoever mm -hmm. wants, whoever wants a book, they can, um, they can add me on LinkedIn. You can, you can put, uh, you can put a chat uh, QR code. I'll, I'll share with you. So you can, they, okay. they can add me, they can add me on the link of the, of the, on LinkedIn, and then they can, like we, I'll I'll be happy to share the book uh, with anyone who who shoot me a message. That's awesome. So if anyone is interested in the book, the they shoot you a LinkedIn. Yes, they should just yeah they should just email me. So uh, I'll share the email uh, on the screen here and the Perfect. the QR code you can scan. You can add me on LinkedIn yep. and uh, yeah, uh, I would be happy to share. That's awesome. That's awesome. Harris, I'm going to, uh, I must say this looks amazing. I mean, I'm really impressed. Um, we are in a digital air era where the only thing that you can hear from everyone is the words you have to add value and add value. And I believe that this is exactly what adding value is. I think it, the book looks great. It has a lot of examples. It, it's, It's a mind goal. I think I really do believe it's a mind goal of of especially for for how how short we are in the game. Uh, I don't think anything like this is out there. Um, I might be wrong, but it, it it really looks amazing. One of my questions was uh, if you had like a prompt library that you sell or that you have courses on that. But even the book has examples of of prompts that that you can you can use. So it's It's great. Uh, it's amazing. So the, the so the thing is, everybody is like trying to sell sell people prompts, but mm -hmm. whatever prompt you want to sell, it's never actually usable. It's not it's not usable in the real world because you cannot give me something that I want to create. Because you know I want to create something that's very specific, and that that's why in the book I actually also added like I'm not sure how many, but. I think more than 50 uh, examples of prompts, but mm -hmm. um, the thing is that I I wanted you to to learn like throughout the book you learn how to push the prompt and uh, the AI to work for you. This is my mm -hmm. this is my I, this was my idea, and uh, I mean thank you for the kind words. Uh, the, the the thing is like there may be people who already did something like this like this kind of book. But I, I'm, I didn't find so far. I didn't find a book that has everything, like literally how to set up Discord, how to set up Mid Journey, how to do private channel. Like you, you can see. I mean, you can, of course, you can find all of this information on the internet. But they are all separate. Mm -hmm. So you need to spend like hours, uh, not hours, days, looking those yeah. videos and then setting up all of those for you. Mm -hmm. And um, like when you actually. When you actually see the video, maybe you can understand something, but uh, then you cannot actually do it by yourself. You need to, again, go to that video and then do it by yourself. But once you read yeah. the book and once you read and understand something, it's different. Then you can do it by yourself. And yeah, yeah book is like, a, it's ebook. It's in digital format. So people can just copy paste stuff that I put in the book, which again, makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. So So yeah, I mean, I, I I really received like um, uh, over 500 messages, like uh, replies for about the book and then how how the book really helped them. Uh, the book will um, how to say? I I think we will need to uh, um, update the book, like mm -hmm. maybe from time to time, because the those AI platforms are also updating, like they are advancing. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, I'm also planning to do that uh, in like next couple of weeks as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, for everyone that watches this episode that wants to get a hold of, hold of Harry's book, I'm gonna put the link in the description. I'm gonna put the email and the information for Harris. Uh, Harris, anything else you would like to promote? Uh, not really. I mean, to be honest, I I hate promoting my myself and stuff <laughs> like. I don't do this for uh, even my LinkedIn. Like I have over one million impressions in just mm -hmm. two or three weeks, 
but I didn't do this with the, with the goal of promoting myself, but mostly helping other people because I know when I was a student and I know when I was younger architect, I know how I was struggling to finish the job, like to get the job done. And um, yeah. especially, um, I mean, I was, I, I wouldn't say I was struggling to keep up with the technology, but uh, sometimes it's overwhelming, you know, because there are so many yeah. things out there. And then if you want to follow all of those things, you really need to spend a lot of time uh, in order to understand those things, those uh, like technology stuff. And uh, like, that's why I wanted to kind of short, shorten this kind of stuff for people. That's why I'm putting mm -hmm. the, that content out there. And then I'm trying to share as much as I can share. That's awesome. And in behalf of everyone that is in my position, because I'm actually one of those people that want to learn and are interested in this kind of, I don't know if it's a movement or what it is, but uh, I really do want to learn about this, but it can be overwhelming, especially when it's not the thing that you do every day. So it's because of you and people like you that do this kind of stuff that people like me can actually learn and not stay behind. So I'm very grateful for, for what you've done. I think I, I haven't read it. I'm going to buy it, but uh from what i see it, it looks amazing it, it's great so uh, i encourage everyone that that's watching this episode to hit him up and follow him on linkedin uh you post uh, very consistently on linkedin um, yes. things that look very cool so i i would encourage everyone to go follow you and and thank you so much for your time harris this has been great thank you I man love, uh, this is amazing <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you for having me here Oh, 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 oh,